The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to the Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. On, our, on its face, our Gospel story this week is about thankfulness. As Jesus journeys to Jerusalem, he heals ten lepers and he sends them on their way. And only one returns to Jesus to express his gratitude. And in doing so, the man experiences unmatched joy and deep wholeness. And I believe that prayers of thanks are part of the, whole, the soul's healing and deliverance. However, this story also presents us with a conundrum. We are left wondering, why didn't the other nine return to express their thanks? And frankly, Jesus is left wondering that too. Why didn't they return? Why didn't they fall at, their, at his feet in thanksgiving? Why didn't they devote their lives to following him? And they also wonder in this story how, how Jesus asks this question. You know, what tone of voice does Jesus use when he questions the whereabouts of the other nine? Is he angry about it? Is he frustrated or irritated or flabbergasted, sad or unsurprised? I think I've often assumed that Jesus was irritated. I mean, I would be if I had performed a miracle ten times over and only one person returned to even say, to even care or say thank you. So I have always assigned selfishness to the other nine. They're so caught up in their new lives that they don't even take notice of Jesus. But today, or this week upon reading it, um, I believe that Jesus was sad. Deeply, deeply sad. And not sad that they didn't say thanks. I mean, not in that way at all. Um, that would make Jesus as self-absorbed as I am. But rather, I believe that he's heartbroken because they didn't realize that they already belonged to him. Even before this miraculous healing, they belonged to Jesus. See, these ten, they subsist in no man's land. According to the customs of the day, they had to live in seclusion keep their distance from anyone who might pass by, sport torn clothes and disheveled hair, and announce their own contamination in a loud, humiliating voice of, of cries shouting, unclean, unclean. These are people who live in the shadows, and their aloneness is almost otherworldly. An invisible barrier, solid as granite, separated them from the rest of humanity. They are wholly untouchable. As I think about this reality, what frightens me the most is not their leprosy or their disease, but rather their utter and complete lack of belonging to someone or to somewhere, to anywhere or to anyone. When Jesus heals their leprosy, he doesn't merely cure their bodies. He enables their safe return or their hopeful safe return to all that makes us fully human family, community, companionship, and intimacy. In other words, Jesus enters a no-man's land, a land of no belonging, and hands out ten unblemished passports. He invites the exiles home, home to him. But the only one who truly realized this was the one, the one who returned to him. Because let's face it, just because they're all physically clean, there's no guarantee that they're going to be let in. In everyone else's minds, their passports still list their home country as no man's land. The one sees his identity, the truest place of belonging. He sees that that lies at Jesus' feet. 
He sees that Jesus' arms alone are wide enough to embrace all of who he is. A leper, a foreigner, an exile, an outsider. But mostly, Jesus' embrace tells him that he's a beloved child of God. The other nine don't realize that their own families and friends will still reject them. And the others don't realize that the world still thinks they are worthless based on their skin. And the others don't realize that Jesus alone will welcome them. And why should they? Why should they believe that the world can be such a harsh and unwelcoming place? Shouldn't they believe that if they've done all the right things and gone through the proper channels and presented themselves to the officials and have a clean passport that they should be let in? In some ways, the nine have a faith in humanity that I do not have. And so I believe that Jesus is sad and heartbroken and anguished, not because they don't give thanks, because they still won't know Belani, even after their physical healing. He knows that the world will reject them, just as the world rejects him. And so I wonder if we can read this passage and allow ourselves to see what hurts lie deep in people, causing them to be the way they are or do the things that they do. The challenge for us is to really see beyond the skin's surface. These days, brown-skinned children languish in cages. Politicians weaponize borders, and racial and religious minorities fear mistreatment in their own neighborhoods, schools, and worship places. Just this past week, our Jewish, our Jewish siblings in Germany were terrorized in their own synagogue on the holiest day of Judaism as a gunman fired upon them. How is it that our hearts have become infected by fear and hatred and exclusion? Ultimately, this story is about faith as a form of courage. The one takes a courageous step towards Jesus, and it changes everything. A step that wells up in him from the deepest caverns of yearning and sorrow and compels him to risk everything just to finally belong somewhere. After falling at the feet of Jesus, the one is told to get up and go on your way. And they honestly wonder what he did in response to Jesus' declaration. Did his courage give him the strength to return to a place that didn't want him and demand justice? Did his courage compel him to stay at Jesus' side and make Jesus' home his home? Did his courage help him wonder why he's always felt alone? Did his courage inspire him to stay in no man's land, caring for the others who were left behind? Because, let's face it, there were more than 10 lovers languishing on the border. I don't have the exact answer, but I feel confident that in having been welcomed, loved, and cleansed by Jesus, he couldn't help but encounter the world with mercy, kindness, and justice. I feel confident that Jesus calls us to take courageous steps like these too. It is our tendency to see the world as populated by us and them. Somehow, any one of them or the other is dangerous to us. Perhaps it's not surprising that this issue of belonging is as timely today as it was in Jesus' time. Jesus does not ration healing because there's not enough to go around or so it only, when it only benefits certain people. Jesus knows that we belong to them and they belong to us, and we are stuck with one another. Jesus imagines a world where you really can go home. A world where your flaws are not used against you, but rather help others become more whole. A world of stunning welcome. A world guided by gorgeous grace and unflinching mercy. Jesus imagines a world built on courageous faith. When I am frankly honest with myself, one thing that's apparent is how desperately I need Jesus to welcome my tired and broken soul and body to himself. And I think everyone does. Without his touch, I am nothing. And I think that's what today's Bible story is about. That every soul needs a home. And sometimes it begins with that same.